at that point, I thought I'm a, I'm roulette god, and and I'm uh, now a professional <laughs> professional gambler. Oh damn, yeah. Uh, one of the times I went broke. Gladly, I didn't go broke in my professional career, but I was always around zero in my first one and a half uh, years of full time. So. There was this very funny story. I, I, I went full time in 2011. So now you have to imagine I started studying and for me it was really like, okay, I have to make this. I have to prove because I sucked in school. I didn't like it. I never went. I uh, skipped most of the classes and I was not a great uh, student. And so now for me, in my mind, it was this, okay, I don't see many options. I'm 17. I can't go uh, in another country. I need to wait another year. So studying is basically the only option. If I fuck this up, I, I don't know what else to do. And that was really, I, I remember this mindset that like, that's the only thing I can do. And if I don't like that or suck at it, then I, my life is screwed. I remember this mindset. And so 2011 was a big year for me because I already started playing poker a lot and I turned 18 and then I really wanted to go full time and play more. But also I studied and I didn't make any money with poker. I played low stakes, like $2.00. 180 men. Then I really set my mind to it and said, okay, 2012, I gotta go and take this more serious. I, I don't take any dumb shots and higher stakes anymore. I like, I grind this out and I played, I think it was $1.50 or $2 and, and $3 uh, 180 men's and grinded these a lot. The typical 20 tabling, uh, making a couple of dollars an hour basically, but it helped me improve my MTT game. And so that was very beneficial, but also um, the study part. And, and there I had two friends or, or three friends I played with a lot, Jan, Martin and Sens. Um, we always grinded together. At some point for us, it was always this dream to go to live events. So we planned a trip to Kings and then 72 hours uh, played poker straight basically. And then we always had this dream to go to an EPT. This was like the dream. We had this plan in 2012, August, we go to the EPT in Barcelona and we prepped everything and we, uh, my friend had a car and so like, okay, we drive to Barcelona, we stay there for a week and we play low six cash games and one or two tournaments. And we looked it up online and it said one, two games, uh, one, three games regularly running in Carzino, Barcelona. Perfect. So we thought, amazing. That's exactly, we had between a thousand and five thousand dollar bankroll. My friends were playing uh, and a 100 uh, online. So they were beating that. So this was perfect. But then you have to imagine we get uh, to Barcelona, we drive there. It was, it was terrible. And we, we had this little place uh, that we stayed in and we get to the casino the first day, super excited. We see all these pros. I'm already like, oh my God, you know, there's, uh, uh, there was the first time we met Nigriano and we saw him walking by. And I still remember this moment in 2012. I was like, oh, this is the guy. It's so funny to think back about that. And then we walk into the cash game area and the lowest limit they have is 510. It's like we see this this screen where it says like five ten and then waiting list and then there's twenty people on a line and we look at each other and it was just like we have a thousand dollars each with us or like we had like eight hundred euros or a thousand euros with us. Uh, you have to imagine us three there with these dreams of we grind one two every day and then we realize we can't even buy in for one buy in. And so what we did was we pooled. So we basically sent the strongest guy in the ring and uh, <laughs> one of them was playing 5-10 and I still remember being the craziest rail bird ever in, in, in this 5-10 game and I was standing like 20 meters away outside of the cash game area and like every 15 minutes he had to come and report and say how, how it was going. So it was ridiculous but it was also really cool because we loved it so much. We're really loving poker, we loved the learning, we loved the grind, but it, it was very exciting for us. Yeah, it was about all our money and it was big stakes for us and it was a big shot and it could go wrong and it couldn't go well and uh, it did go wrong. <laughs> so we uh, pulled a 500 bounty or a 1K bounty I played that I busted in like two hours against a Greek guy. And then uh, I think the 510 game also didn't go so well. So we were basically broke. So I was like, I had maybe a couple hundred euros left. Then my friend lost his camera and it was literally like day two. <laughs> so it was like seven day trip. 
<laughs> and day two, and I was broke, and I was just like, there's nothing to do here. I have no idea. I didn't even think about doing this in a touristic way because for us it was like, okay, 12 hour grind a day in, in the casino. And that's just, that was the, the reason we went there. That was the first time I started playing roulette. I was sitting there with like, <laughs> I bought in with like 20 euros, and I had like, to, uh, you know, one euro chips in front of me. I was just like placing one euros on numbers, and I ran so fucking hot. It was so funny. It was like I remember my friends coming to me, and obviously they thought I'm a, I'm a total degenerate now, grinding away my time on on the roulette table while they were um, playing cash game, or one of them was, and we were just kind of railing the tournament, the EPT going on, and and everything else. And I think I spun it up to like six hundred euros or something. At that point, I thought I'm a I'm roulette god and and I'm uh, now a professional <laughs> professional gambler. And just every time, you know, it's just like the 25 is coming and just boom. And um, that was that was hilarious. So I remember uh, going broke in Barcelona, and I think I lost most of that back and maybe uh, left with a, a a blue eye and and uh, had maybe uh, two three hundred euros coming back from Barcelona of uh, the maybe thousand I went there with. So um, basically uh, busted my bankroll there and, and somewhat saved me with, uh, with playing a little bit of roulette. But yeah, not, not too many degenerate stories after that in terms of roulette, but it's, it's funny how, if I look back at that, how a lot of things that were normal two years later were super crazy at that time. So seeing all these pros was crazy. Playing a 1K was absolutely crazy. Um, buying into a 5-10 game for 1k was crazy for me. Uh, so a lot of these things were very extraordinary. And then exactly one year later, I was playing the EPT main in Barcelona. And I had won the Super Tuesday. And I had a 300k bankroll. And I was doing very well. And that was, in hindsight now, this is both a funny story for me and really crazy to think back about how fast it can go and how you can go from just looking in from the outside and sweating these games to playing in these games and, and competing on the highest level. And I, I look back at it now with uh, a, a lot of emotion because there was so much passion in there. I could really tell, like I spent time in a casino because I, I really wanted to. I, I never do that with other things, but I just really love poker and and wanted to be around it and and learn more about it. And I think that showed in my in my drive and thrill around the game later on. So um, that's a little anecdote around how I went broke the first time, um, or maybe at that point uh, I went from zero to a thousand and back about five times. So uh, around 2012, and yeah, and then I had my little. Uh, I had my little success uh, at Kings where I came second or chopped a 500 euro tournament. And that was my first, you know, six, 7,000 euros bankroll where I was like kind of broke through this little first step. And then maybe also to add on my second time going broke is I, I thought I was the king. I was, I, I thought I was the genius. And I went to Baden, I think it was Poker EM, and I played everything on my own. I played a 500, a, one, a 1K on my own, I played a 2K on my own, and I went from like 8K to like 500. Like I busted six tournaments, I was just broke again. I was like, fuck. I thought, I thought, you know, I'm just gonna win one of these tournaments or cash it, and then it's just, you know, it's gonna be fine. And then I went back to grinding online. Um, I booked a flight ticket to Africa with my last. 2,000 euros, had maybe 1,000 euros in cash left. Yeah, then I started grinding online uh, on my own in May the next year. Um, and then from then on, it was just uh, straight up. So that was my, uh, my first struggle years, uh, my first time going broke. And uh, maybe you are aware in this situation and can relate, but for me it was uh, at that time very emotionally challenging and really cool to look back now and see how fast you can go from struggling and being broke or going broke and it's super normal like everyone's been there you know not a great player or your win rate isn't high or not very disciplined yet like that's normal it's it's normal to make mistakes it's normal to go broke it's normal to do bad bankroll management and at some point you'll figure it out and these are great learning experiences so these were my times going broke and uh, since then never did again so uh, yeah that's my little Barcelona story I hope you enjoyed it. Mm -hmm.